files of the early web, many stories of famous and notorious characters of that period. Ben Thompson, Texas gambler and gunman. Suave when sober, savage when drunk. This blooded killer had a bad habit of paying his debts of honor with lead instead of gold. I'll take two. I'm out. I'll play these. I check. Let's see you. <laughs> Look at that. Three tens. <laughs> that makes $970 you owe me, Mr. Uh, it was Thompson, wasn't it? Ben Thompson, sir. Well, I'll be in Dodge shortly. Well, I guess we better quit, huh? Here's what I owe you. Thanks. We haven't much more time. Would you uh, care to wager your winning, sir? Double or nothing? $970 on one hand of showdown poker? You look startled, sir. Would $9.70 seem less extravagant? Well, no. No, of course not. Why would it be? It merely represents my winnings. Deal, mister. You go to bed. What's that for? Honest men are in the habit of dealing from the top of the deck, mister. You'll apologize for that remark, sir. Since you are gentleman enough to recognize a debt of honor, mister, you can forget what you owe me. Conductor, this man's a card shark. I want you to throw him off the train at the next stop. You're a liar. Just a minute. I want to talk to you. I can use a man like you. Listen, I run a saloon down in San Antonio. If you're down that way, look me up. The name's Kane. A railroad conductor and passenger had been murdered. I'm Matt Clark, railroad detective. After checking the witnesses, I was certain that the notorious Ben Thompson was a killer. He had disappeared. It was my job to find him. Even cold, calculating gamblers have homes, or at least places where they go when times are rough. The Mariposa Saloon in Austin, Texas, was such a place for Ben Thompson. Where can I find the boss? As soon as I saw it, it became very clear why Ben Thompson might consider the Mariposa a home. Don't stand there like a gawking farmhand, Hanson. Shut the door and come on in. Well, a little closer, I don't like to shout. The longer we know each other, the more I realize you're not such a gawking farmhand after all. What are you selling? Myself. I'm a gambler looking for a job. Hmm? Riffle, shuffle, and deal as a poker hand. With your gloves on? When did you deal last? About a year ago. Tried punching kettle, but that was too much like work. And a little tough on the hands. Bit rusty, aren't you? I got all the dealers I need right now. Thanks, anyway. Just a minute. Come to think of it, my blackjack dealer drinks too much, not too reliable. Are you reliable? I don't drink, if that's what you mean. Women? I'm a gambler, miss. I'm not very lucky at love. Oh, you may be older than you look, but you're not that old. Start tonight at 8. Wash off the Texas dust and be here on time. Uh, what's your name? Matt. And call me Texas. See you tonight, Texas. Okay. 
I worked a blackjack game for over a week in the gambling house owned by Texas Bess. If Ben Thompson showed up, I never knew it, nor did I see anyone answering his general description. During the days, I made it a point to hang around the stage office whenever coaches came in or left. And one day in early spring, Miss Frankie Adams, another railroad detective, unexpectedly arrived in Austin. Thank you for a most pleasant journey, Mr. Thompson. Pleasure has been all mine, Miss Adams. Riding a coach is usually an unavoidable torture. This one turned out all too short and sweet. The credit is equally yours. May I see you to your hotel? If you wish. I'll be with you in just a moment. You know where to get in touch with me? Yeah. Remember, I'm depending on you to pick good men. We've got to leave first thing in the morning. I'll take care of everything. You're doing very well. If you care to come into my office, I'd like to talk about a better deal. All right. Who is it? Matt. How dare you follow me? What's the matter? The lady detective afraid of her reputation? No, the lady detective isn't. But I'd hate to spoil my beautiful friendship with Mr. Ben Thompson. Say, that was nice work, Frankie. How did you manage it? Well, when you left for St. Louis, the office got word that he was in Fort Worth. So I went down there. I followed him to the depot, and he bought a ticket for Austin. I managed to be on the same stage. Did you find out anything that I could use? No. Thompson talks and acts like a gentleman. Pretends to be a businessman. When he isn't wearing a gun openly, he carries one of his shoulder holster under his coat. Who's the man he was talking to? I don't know. He called him Mr. Kane. I think Ben's working for him. When are you going to pick him up? Before he leaves town. I'm a blackjack dealer over to Mariposa. Thompson used to own half interest in it with Texas Bess. Ah, female. Oh, absolutely. Big personality. Why, she could crowd a bar room all by herself. Be careful. I hear Ben is very possessive. <laughs> I have noticed any fences around her. I say love is blind. Jealous? All right, all right, let it go. Too bad I told Ben I was an army widow and a lady. Otherwise, I could work in the saloon with you. Now, what could you do at the saloon? Stand over your shoulder and keep you from cheating. At cards, that is. <laughs> I'm doing all right. Yeah. Texas. How dare you come back? I've always loved you, Texas, and I always will. You whisper that in some other shell like here. This one's gone deaf. We go well together, Texas. We fit. I believe that once, not anymore. I've had a tough year, Texas. 
I've learned a few things. Like holding your liquor? <laughs> like being a good loser? Like not killing a man, but dropping a card face up instead of down? Huh. Don't give me that I got religion line. I can read the papers. I know what kind of progress you made. All you ever left behind is a whiff of gunpowder and a corpse in every gambling saloon on the border. I don't like to hear you talk like that, Texas. It's like coming home and not being allowed in. Don't make me sick, Ben. We're through. I was through and you tried to cheat me out of this place and hand my share over to that French dame in a cheap perfume. Water over the dam, Texas. Oh, come on, honey. Haven't you got any forgiveness in your heart? You don't fool me a little bit, Ben. I saw you come into town with that cheap floozy on your arm. <laughs> so that's it. Well, I can explain that very easily. Yeah? I don't bother. I wouldn't be interested anyway. Except in how much you were able to take her for. Not a penny. It just so happens I have money of my own. I'm working for a man in San Marcos. You mean your gun's working. Texas, are any of my old pals still around town? Yeah, there are a few bums left. The rest were killed off. When you left last time, I turned the doormat around. Reed's welcome on the way out. Well, as long as I'm here with nothing but time and money in my hands, you mind if I try my luck? Go right ahead. Thanks. Think I'll try blackjack. Go right ahead. All the games are open to cash customers. This looks like the house's most popular dealer. Hey, 500. What's the matter, boys? Game's not folding. You say 500? Right. 100, 200, 300, 400. It's the last of my cash. Deal them. Hit me. Again. How big a bank draft will you take? I'm sorry, we don't cash any drafts. You'll have to come up with the money. Rules of the house. Well, you've got all of my cash, you know that. Well, I guess in that case, you're finished for the evening. What's the trouble here? This man went on to my draft. Everybody knows Ben Thompson's draft is as good as his word. And what you mean is everybody knows it don't mean a hoot and a holler. Come on, Texas, be a sport. Loan me 500. You already owe me more than that. I haven't got a chance of getting it back. What do you want to do? Take it out of my hide? Not a bad idea. But seeing there's nothing in your hide adds up to more than two bits. It's worth a loss to see you walk out of here and never come back. Nobody throws Ben Thompson out of anywhere. Nobody throws me out here till I feel like going. I don't feel like going until I've had another drink. I wouldn't take that drink if I were you. Why not? Because in Texas says you're going. Lock him up. You know who he is? Yeah, I know. But what difference does that make? What are the charges? Disturbing a peace. You prepared to sign the complaints? I am. Say, what is this? Trouble with Ben is when he's released, he has a nasty habit of shooting at those who put him in, whether they wear badges or not. Constable, you can lock him up on my say so. You don't mind if I make that plain to him, do you? I'll accept that, Honor. Now, in the morning, I'm going to have to let him out and give him his gun back. You understand that, too, don't you? Yeah, I understand, but lock him up and hold him. I'll come down in the morning and sign a complaint. All right, give me a hand or two. One of the things I like in a man is loyalty. When that bum gets out of jail. I wouldn't worry about that. Let's get the game started again. Why wouldn't a 
have bailed you out if I didn't need you so bad. Where are those men you were supposed to pick up? Well, they're around town. I can collect them all in 30 minutes. First, I've got a personal matter to take care of. That can wait. We've got to get back to San Marcos. You never told me what you wanted the men for. What's the rush? The railroad's extending a spur line below San Marcos. There's some valuable wheat land I'd like to buy up cheap and resell to the railroad. Railroad buyers will be down there in a few days. The secret will be out. And you want me to scare the farmers into selling him? That's the general idea. I can make it plenty hot for him. Let's go. I just came from the jail. Your deputy tells me that you released Ben Thompson. That's right. I just came over here to warn you on taxes. I told you to hold him and that I would prefer charges. Brooks elected me to keep peace in this town. That means I'm even supposed to keep hotheads like you from getting murdered. Why didn't you tell me you were a railroad detective? Up to and including now, you haven't given me any reason why I should. Now, just why did you release Ben Thompson? I couldn't hold Thompson for nothing more except just disturbing the peace. And in this town, that's a night in jail and a ten-buck fine. He didn't have a thin dime on him last night. Who bailed him out? I didn't know who he was. All I know is the fine was paid. They leave together? Sorry, I wouldn't know. Matt. Yeah? You're going after Ben? There's a murder charge against him in Kansas. Now, you wouldn't happen to know where he's gone, would you, Texas? So, you're a detective and you want me to help you find him, huh? That's a general idea. He's caused you nothing but trouble. Uh, you can say that again. He told me he was working for someone in San Marcos. Just came here to pick up his old gang. Ben's gun hand is quicker than the eye, Matt. I hope you're better at guns than you are at dealing blackjack. <laughs> Take care of yourself and good luck. Thanks. Just a little something on account, Matt. <laughs> Anytime you care to collect the balance, there'll always be a place open at any of my tables. Can you join me in an eye opener, Texas? No, oh, thanks. I just had one. Frankie, the constable let Ben Thompson out of jail this morning. I found out that he and a gang of men rode out of town. I think they were heading for San Marcos. Oh. Remember yesterday? The man with Thompson said they had to ride first thing this morning. They're planning something, but why San Marcos? Well, I don't know. Get dressed. I'll check the train schedule of San Marcos and wire the sheriff to get a posse together. Just a minute. Yeah? What's that, blood? Huh? Lipstick. Oh, oh, that. I'll tell you how that happened. Just as I left the Mariposa, I... Well, I'll be doggone if I'm gonna start making any excuses. Frank and I were on our way to San Marcos that same day. behind him. Now, what's all that for? Well, you had that dreamy look on your face. Were you thinking of Texas? Ah. Uh, and I don't mean the state. You know, Frankie, I was just thinking. If that guy Thompson hadn't been such a heel, I'm sure that Texas could have straightened him out. Just a heart of gold with a mother complex. No, I really think she loved the guy. Uh, looks like we're pulling into San Marcos. What a lot of smoke is over there. Well, the conductor said the wheat fields were on fire. Yeah? Well, we're coming into station now. Come on, let's go. When we arrived in town, the sheriff was waiting. He told us the fire was deliberate and Ben Thompson had not been seen in town. I joined the posse, expecting to find Thompson involved in the cause of the fire. fire in the distance. Someone was trying to stop the farmers from fighting a blade.
involved in the biggest prairie fire ever known in the state of Texas. Ben Thompson disappeared in the excitement and the smoke. Well, the fire is out, but Thompson disappeared. Matt, I found out the man that Thompson's been working for doesn't live in this town. Tell you what, wire Texas best and ask her if she knows where we can locate Thompson's friend. She knows every tramp in the country. All right, Matt. to drive out the ranches in the valley didn't stop Ben Thompson from coming into San Antonio and having a showdown with Kane for the payoff. Make it a straight one. Texas Bess had sent us information that a man named Kane was running a saloon here in San Antonio. Up. First you get drunk and I have to pay your fine. Then you let a stinking posse chase you off before the fields were burned down. I can't get my hands on that land now. My deal with you is off. Oh, no, it isn't, Kane. I went as far as I could to the law arrived. You can pay me right now. I need the money. <laughs> search for Ben Thompson was suddenly over. He had made his last mistake. And it was settled, finally and beyond question. On that 11th day of March, 1884, Ben Thompson's career of crime had come to an end in San Antonio, Texas. <laughs> 